Well, I think this is a whole of society solution. We have to stop these awful tragedies and these awful crimes happening in our communities. And we still have victims out there that are fighting for their lives. So our thoughts and prayers need to still be with them uh, from these shootings that happen. Look, this is from the really bottom up, I think a lot need, more needs to be done. If there's indications and warnings uh, that someone is, has violent tendencies or their activity on social media, we see this even with homegrown you know, terrorism type of things. We've got to have families and friends and coaches and religious leaders and others who may see that somebody is a risk to don't be a bystander, do something about it. But then there has to be treatment for them. Um, many places in our society, there's just not treatment available. Or because of, uh, you know, we very much believe in civil liberties. Uh, sometimes if the person's an adult, they just can refuse the treatment and, and continue to potentially be a threat. So a lot has to be done, I think, at the societal level for more early identification access to mental health care, uh, support to families and others who know somebody may be a risk. Uh, and But then on our part, we got to look at the federal level. What else can we do? We've passed some things to strengthen the background check system, uh, to make sure that states and localities who have individuals who have committed a felony or they're uh, committed domestic abuse or they have uh, been adjudicated by a judge to be mentally ill, that they cannot go purchase a firearm. We gotta, we've strengthened that system. Sometimes that information isn't in the database, so we've got to hold states and localities accountable to put that stuff in the database. There's maybe more opportunities for, uh, at the state level, you've seen the red flag laws, and I know Governor Ducey had an initiative here that uh, he, he's tried to push through uh, that allow due process, uh, but also allow when there's a a real concern by friends, families, or law enforcement that, that somebody is a risk, that there's a way to go through due process and to be able to stop that person from having access to firearms in an emergency status while still protecting due process to make sure that that's not abused. So we'll be looking at some federal legislation potentially to incentivize uh, that type of activity. And I'm certainly open to any other solutions uh, that we can do together uh, in not a partisan way, not in a political way, uh, at the federal level appropriately you know, to address these issues and to stop this violence from happening. We just, like, nobody should go into a Walmart to, sh Walmart to shop and wonder if something like this is going to happen. So let's sit down and figure this out. Let's not, not play partisan politics with it. Let's not try to simplify very complex issues uh, and do our part both at the federal, state, local, and in society for us to have an early identification treatment as available and to keep you know firearms and other weapons out of the hands of those who are going to be violent